Good morning. We're so glad that you're with us today in, in worship. We hope you feel welcome and we hope you feel like you belong. Today we are, we're going to start our worship by singing a, a hymn of praise. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Just remain seated and let's sing together. We'll sing through the song twice. Open the eyes of my heart. Let's join and sing together. Welcome. We're so glad that you're with us in worship today. Now would you join me in our call to worship from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you alone, you alone, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Please now join me in our opening prayer. O Jesus, our good shepherd, search us out with grace and draw us closer to you and to one another. Whether we are in person or online, Surround us with an embrace so loving and sure that it claim upon us is beyond our wandering ways 
and fragile fears. Today in worship, may the Holy Spirit's wondrous presence find us, lift us, and carry us spiritually home to live joyfully in God's presence forevermore. Amen. And now I invite you to stand and we'll sing together, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Let's stand together and sing. Amen. Please be seated. Paul writes, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He took our sins upon his body on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. It's in the confidence of this love and forgiveness that we can make our confession together. So I invite you to join me in our prayer of confession. Blessed Jesus, oh blessed Jesus, we admit that we have failed to trust your guidance and refuse to follow your saving ways. In the struggles of life, we have doubted God's care and in the comfort of green pastures of bounty we have ignored God's presence entirely. In this time of worship, we ask your forgiveness upon us and desire that you strengthen and renew our discipleship to Jesus so that we will be willing to trust and follow wherever he leads us. Amen. And now I invite you to take a, a moment for a personal confession, meditation, reflections, and take a moment to listen for God to speak to your heart this morning.
my friends, in God's grace and in our faith, we are made a new creation. The old self, the sinful self is gone. A new life has begun. My friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. I now invite you to stand and at a safe distance to welcome one another by making some noise together. Let us stand and make some noise together. Amen. getting some feedback today so you'll have to bear with me our scripture lessons today come from Paul's first letter to, to Timothy and from the the gospel of Luke please join me in prayer oh holy God we pray that you will send your spirit upon us Lord we pray that you open each of our hearts and minds and us together as a whole open us up to your presence so that as the, the scripture is read and then the word is proclaimed, we will hear the message that you have for each of us and all of us today. We pray this in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading is from Paul's first letter to Timothy. Paul writes, I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of the Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I receive mercy so that in me as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And from the Gospel of Luke, the 15th chapter, two parables of Jesus. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. That's Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he, Jesus, told them this parable. Which of you having a hundred sheep and losing one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost? until he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulder and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, 
There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 religious people who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. We thank God for these words of life. This actually is one of the oldest images of Jesus. It's from a Roman catacomb. One of the earliest images of Jesus and ideas of Jesus is Jesus has the good shepherd. So this image would have been from the first century A.D. of people's images of, of what Jesus' care and love was like. God is always looking for you. God is always searching for your heart. Did J. Jesus tell us about lost sheep and a lost coin? But this is so much more. In truth, it's Jesus telling them and us it's about being found. Found by a searching shepherd, found by a sweeping woman, and ultimately found by a steadfast and loving God. We don't know how the sheep got lost. We don't know how the coin got separated from the woman. All we know is that they were lost. All we know is like you and me, they were lost needed to be found and indeed we are part of a lost and found believers <coughs> I don't think there's one of us that hasn't suffered a loss during this time of pandemic is there anyone here that hasn't suffered some type of loss not necessarily a, a loss of, of work or a loss of a loved one. Some have indeed experienced that sorrow. We've lost people that we love here at Florissant Presbyterian. People have lost jobs. They've lost opportunities. We particularly all have lost time together where we have been separated when we would have been united, where we've not been able to travel and see family and We've had long stretches of, of time go between our hugs and, and kisses and our telling people that we love them. No, we all have lost something during this pandemic time. So we know something about the lost and the found, don't we? One article I read surveyed that 97% of teachers believe that the children have lost ground in their education. Some think it is up to three months that they, of learning that they have lost. And this is not only just book learning, but also emotional and relationship learning. Others have said that a whole year may be a complete loss. Yes, during this pandemic, one of the groups that has taken the brunt of our isolation and separation is the loss that children have had of going to school, of being together, of growing in their, their knowledge. We don't know quite how to solve this problem, and it's a, a big a big issue and, and multiple people and multiple systems involved. But there are some suggestions of how to help children to, 
to cope and to, to move forward from those losses. And I think some of these suggestions are good for you and me as well. Because whether we want to admit it or not, our world was turned upside down, our schedules were scrambled, and we lost a lot of our lives in time, at least at our own will and our own way. But we know loss. But this is one of the suggestions of, of a professional teacher for ways to help the students deal with this loss. Allow these students to express their grief. Listen without offering quick solutions or telling them how to feel. Calm their fears without minimizing their emotions. Respond honestly to questions and admit when you don't know the answer. Encourage conversations, play physical outlets with symbolic activities using drawings and stories. Be patient, be nurturing, and consistent. Listen patiently without judgment. I think our children will grow more healthily and work through these losses they've experienced if we took, both us and professional educators took some of these advice, especially listening patiently without judgment. Jesus was coming under judgment. His table talk and conversations around meals had become a, a focus, a flashpoint. People were wanting to gather around him to hear his teaching and to learn his ways, some to imp, simply to be in his presence and to, to touch him. And in our story today, we find Jesus once again at table. And there on the outskirts are the Pharisees and the scribes. And as they see him at table, they say, birds of a feather must flock together, so look who he is with. He's with the sinners. He's with the prostitutes. He's with the tax collectors, the awful tax collectors. These are those who are collaborating with Rome to rob their own people. These are the people who use the authority of Rome to line their own pockets with extra money from their neighbors. What is Jesus doing with tax collectors? What is Jesus doing with prostitutes? What is Jesus doing with all these sinners? And if it weren't in the Bible, and if it weren't on this side of the story, I'm not sure we wouldn't be right there with them. Making our judgments. Making our decisions feeling pretty pumped up and proud of ourselves that at least we're not them. And in our lesson today, it appears that Jesus is keenly aware of the Pharisees and the scribes' attitudes and that Jesus is keenly aware of yours and mine attitude too. And rather than address them directly, in a way that probably would have just shut them down or, or, or offended them, Jesus resorts to his most powerful, powerful lesson. He tells them parables. He tells them two parables, particularly directed right at the, the Pharisees and the scribes. He said there was a man who had a hundred sheep and one of the sheep goes astray, and he leaves the 99 to go find the stray sheep. And when he finds the sheep, the little lamb, he picks it up and puts it on his shoulder and carries it home and draws his neighbors and friends and family together to celebrate 
that the lamb that was lost has now been found. The Pharisees and the scribes must have been saying, what kind of shepherd is this that would risk losing the 99 sheep to go after one stray? That's like having $100 on the table and a dollar blown away and leaving the 99 on the table to go chase the one. While he's out after the stray, the 99 could have been taken by a wolf, a fox, a thief. They might have been puzzled. And I think they were puzzled at this parable. What kind of shepherd is this who leaves the 99 and puts all that value on just one little sheep? And maybe sensing their skepticism, their internal question, Jesus tells them another parable. There was a lady who had a silver coin, and she lost the silver coin in her house. And so she lit the lamp, and she swept and swept every corner, nook and cranny and crack, until she found the silver coin. And then, and then she celebrated. She invited her neighbors and her friends and her family to celebrate that the the coin was lost and now it is found. Maybe by now it was starting to, to sink in to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And Jesus then lays it on the line. There is more celebration than the angels of heaven over one sinner that repents rather than 99 that are in the fold. Jesus wants to teach the Pharisees and the Sadducees and wants to show you and me the power of God's love to find us to find you and me, to find our needs, to find our hearts. No matter how lost we may be, no matter how broken we may be, how twisted our hearts may feel and how they must hurt, our God still searches. Our God still longs for us. Our God wants us to be found and to be loved. There Jesus is setting with the sinners, with prostitutes, with tax collectors, and he's letting the righteous know those who have prestige and power, those who are known for their holiness, that they are under the same love as these sinners that he's at table with that the same desire for God to claim them is claiming these same sinners. That the same love that they think they've earned by keeping the law and following all the rules is offered to those who are sinners and broken and even thieving tax collectors. God loves them the same as God loves them the holy, and that our notions of holy and acceptance, our notions of of who's in and who's out, our notions of the kingdom of God are not God's, and our values and our ways are turned upside down in the kingdom of heaven, where the holy practice unholiness, and those who are unholy somehow are transformed into holiness by God's love. Friends, this is a story of the lost being found and claimed and loved. Of lost and found and loved. One of the things that has occurred during this pandemic is that children have lost a lot of time. 
But I have a story of some children that, that lost their teacher and then found him. Mr. Castro never missed class. Mr. Castro was never late for anything. He was one of those teachers that you could count on, that you could rely on being there if you were a student. He was a teacher that would skip lunch in order to help you to, to study, to get through a problem. He was a teacher that would stay after school in order to help you with a math problem. So when Mr. Castro hadn't shown up for school, the students began to, to worry. Where is this beloved teacher? Well, it was about an hour and a half after school had started that Mr. Castro came walking in and where they learned his story. Mr. Castro had been late that morning and he had missed his bus. You see, he lived on the other side of Los Angeles. Not on the western elite side, but in the, the eastern side. Each day, Mr. Castro had a, a four-hour commute to school. It started with a, a three-hour scooter ride to the bus stop. And then a bus stop, a bus ride to Central City to another bus that dropped him off a mile away from the school where he, he walked to school. The children had no idea what Mr. Castro did each day to be with them. Until that point, they had no idea that he didn't live in the same neighborhood that they lived in. But when they thought their teacher was lost and they heard his story, they began to reevaluate the situation. Word spread about his four-hour commute both ways, often not arriving home to his children till 9.30 at night. So as they reflected on this teacher being lost and how they could help, they decided to, to pull their heads together. And with their parents and with some direction from other teachers, they had a plan. It was a few weeks later that they invited Mr. Castro to come and solve a problem. There was a problem in the gym, and, and they thought only that he could solve it. Well, as he arrived in the gym, the student body was waiting for him. Surprised and a bit put back, some of his students walked Mr. Castro into the gym. And then they told him how much he meant to them and how they, they recognized the hours and hours of sacrifice that he'd made to help them learn and grow in their math. And then they had the real surprise for him. The students, his students, had gathered together their money, and it had contributions throughout the school, and they had bought Mr. Castro a three-year-old Mazda XC30. So he no longer had to commute by scooter and bus, but he could drive to school. The teacher they thought was lost was found. And when he was found and found out, they recognized the love and the care that he had shared with them. My friends, God is still searching for us, for you and for me, and God wants to find us. Just as a shepherd searched for the one sheep just as a woman swept for the one coin, 
God searches for you and for me, not just because we're lost, but because God wants to know that we are found, that you are loved, and that you are claimed that you are important to God. Now, God may not be like the students and put an offering together for a new car, but God does call us together to remind us that our losses aren't the end and our grief isn't the last word and that God has the last word. And that last word isn't lost, but it's found. And that last word isn't uh, 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 anger, but it's, it's love. My friends, just as that shepherd searched for the sheep, the one sheep, and the woman searched for the lost call, coin, God searches for you and for me. And in that searching, we can be confident, no matter how confusing our world may be, no matter how turned up, signed down it can be, like it has been in these last couple of years, that we are never truly lost. But our God is always searching. And that in God's grace and God's will, we will be found and we'll know and you will know that you are loved and claimed. And that we never were, need to worry again about being lost and found. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. Thank you, choir. This is a time when we come together to share our joys and our, our concerns and then lift them up to God in, in prayer. Are there any uh, concerns that you want to, to share today? Or going? Yes, Ellen. I have a joy. Um, I asked several months ago for prayers from my niece, Heather Saha. She had COVID last September and had never recovered from uh, the loss of taste and smell. She had lost an immense a lot of weight and everything. Yeah. Well, she went for a procedure last weekend uh, down in Texas, College Station, Texas, where the doctor gave her some injections in the ganglion nodes in her neck, and she's already recovered some of her sense of taste and smell. So I, I'm thankful that our prayers were answered for her recovery. Amen. Wonderful news. Yes, this long-term COVID is really uh, something that, yeah, uh, people are, are suffering with. And we're so glad that Heather has, has gotten this, uh, this healing and the answers. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns? Okay, let's come together in prayer. O oh Lord, search us and know us. Look into our hearts and know our needs and know our very selves. Lord, today we trust that you are our good shepherd and that you lead us into green pastures and by still waters, that you go with us and protect us and that you prepare life before. Lord, it's as a good shepherd that we ask that you share and care for those that are your part of your flock and those that need your healing and caring touch. Lord, we especially ask that you comfort Andy as he gets weaker each day. And Lord, we pray that you'll be with Wilma and her battle with cancer. Lord, we ask that you be with Joyce and be with Tom. Watch over Judy and, and Betty. Be with Barb and Betty. Be with Dick and Joy and Georgiana. Be with Ruth and Ellen. Be with Lois and Lynn. Be with Diane. Watch over Fern. Be with Doris and Carol. Watch over Sarah. Watch over Pamela and Brittany. Be with Lil and Ruth and Jake. Watch over Dennis. Watch over uh, Sue and her sister, Lynn. Lord, we're so thankful that Heather has found some answers to these lingering COVID losses. Lord, we pray that she will continue to heal and get all the, the senses and losses uh, that they may return. Lord, in that, we remember all those that are still grieving during this pandemic, those that lost loved ones and friends, those that have lost positions and opportunities, those whose lives have been turned upside down. Lord, we pray that you'll comfort them and continue to help them to heal and pull their lives into, uh, 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 into prosperity and, and faithfulness. Lord, today on this day of 9-11, we also remember the horror of, of when our country was attacked, both in, in New York and Washington and then in the air, Lord. We uh, pray that you will help us to learn the lessons of, of this horrible event, but you will help us to change their destruction and horror and hatred into ways of compassion and healing and and changing our world from a place of hate and violence to a place of peace and love. And in that, we pray for the, the wars around the world, particularly the one waging in Ukraine, that, Lord, that among the, the leaders that ways of peace will become apparent and that soon they'll come to the table and bring an end to this horrible conflict and destruction. Lord, in this time of loss and and growth, we do remember our children and our teachers as they 
have started up this school year. Lord, we've welcomed them back, and now they're rolling. But we pray, Lord, that you'll help them to grow in healthy ways, to, to overcome the losses that they've experienced, and that together students and teachers will, will form a, a bond that will help each of them to, to grow and heal from these disturbing and, and difficult times. Lord, we pray that you'll continue to watch over us here at Florissant Presbyterian. Help us to be a place of, of welcome and a place of hope and love. Lord, we, we pray that we will be uh, open to those that are different than us, open to those who are, are going to change us and make us better and more faithful. Lord, we pray that like Jesus, we will be able to and open to welcome all those who need to hear the good news of your love. Lord, it's in that love that we are gathered, and it's in that love that we're empowered, and it's in that love of Jesus that sends us out into our world. Lord, we pray that you will help us to grow in it and that that will be the source of our energy and our power. And thus, it is in the name of the Lord of love, the name of Jesus, that we come to pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We have a, a couple of uh, announcements for you. One of the announcements I don't have a slide for, but I want to tell you about it and bring it to your attention. There are some little uh, envelopes back on the table. Our session, as I, I think I told you uh, last couple of weeks, voted to take up a, a special offering for some of the physical expenses of uh, our building and grounds. This uh, uh, spring, we are, this summer, last late summer going in, into the fall, we were hit with a number of big expenses. Fortunately, we were not flooded during the great flood, but we did, uh, uh, we did sustain storm damage from storms earlier, so we had to have some roof repair. We had the oldest electric panel in the church that uh, would not pass code that must be replaced, and also trees that were endangering our neighbor's property had to be uh, serviced. Uh, so we've had some unexpected expenses. It's, it's difficult for us to, to bring this to your attention because you've been so faithful during this pandemic time and are so faithful but we want to give you this uh, opportunity and to let you know the needs. Now, on our bulletin board out in the hallway, all of our finances are posted. There's nothing hidden or secret here at, at FBC. It's all for you to know in regard to our financial situations and, and where we are. And uh, part of that is an outline of these most recent expenses and the reason we're taking this uh, special offering. I hope that you'll consider this, that it's uh, possible for you to, to share in this time. But, and if you would like to make a contribution to the building fund, there are these envelopes there. Put it in the, the memo of your check or simply let uh, our uh, uh, office manager, Mrs. Finke, uh, know that it is your desire to contribute to this uh, building fund uh, physical plant uh, offering that we're taking. Uh, and this is a, a one-time call, so uh, this will, uh, yeah, I pray that you'll be generous and that you will realize the, the needs that we've had in these last few months. Enough said on that, yeah. Now here's the good thing. We're having a game day after church. After church, we're gathering for salad and pizza and to have fun together. Uh, we've done this in the evening, and some folks couldn't be here because of, of darkness, and so we're having it during the day, right after church. You all are invited. There was a sign-up sheet, so we'd have some idea of who would be here. You don't have to sign up to come. Everybody is welcome. There's enough food for everyone, and Lord willing, everyone will have fun. 
That's the main goal. We'll play some games together, and then we'll play some individual uh, uh, games, and hopefully it will be an afternoon of fun and fellowship. And everyone is invited, and there's enough food for everyone. So please don't let that stand in the way of your joining us for a time of, of fun and, and fellowship. That's this afternoon, right after service. Also, on the 24th, we're going to be working with the St. Louis Food Bank, volunteering at the food bank. And Carol has some details to share with you about this process, and we're going to work with you on this, too. Go ahead, Carol. Okay. So September 24th, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., we have the opportunity to volunteer at the St. Louis Area Food Bank. We have 15 spots to fill. If you would like to join us, please sign up on the sign-up sheet with your name and email address. And that's important to have the email address. Um, there is this paper, this one here, um, with instructions on how to register for this event. Everyone who volunteers will need to go to the food bank website to register first and then go to the FPC volunteer hub to sign up for our shift. When you sign up on the sheet out front with your email address, I will send you the email with the links so that all you need to do is click on them um, and then fill the, out the information that they need to have. September is Hunger Action Month, and they need lots of volunteers to, let, to get food boxed up and out to those in need. We hope you will join us. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. And I will say, if you're at all hesitant about the online part, please come see me, because I'm hesitant on those things. I, I, you know, it doesn't, it's not second nature to me. It, I sometimes struggle with those things, uh, but I know that we can do it together. So if you're uh, hesitant, if that's holding you back, don't let it hold you back. Please come to me, and we'll get this all taken care of if you want to be at the food bank on, on Saturday. Okay? I, I just want you to know that. Because sometimes I get frustrated with the online things. It's not my second nature, uh, uh, but, but I will help you with it. So uh, if you want to be there, and don't let this hold you back. That's all. Yeah. Uh, we had a wonderful grab-and-go. Thank you to all those that come out on Thursday and make our meal possible. Those who are early here setting up, those who stay late to take down, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we had a, a wonderful uh, uh, evening uh, last Thursday serving uh, folks here in, in that, and, and often they're in need. It, it truly is. Sometimes we, we don't see it but uh, until it comes right before us. And people are hungry. People need help. And thank you for making that possible with your giving and support. How many meals did we give? 93 on, on Thursday. 93 on Thursday. We also have started the adult Sunday school meeting right there in the back at 845. Uh, just drop in. You don't have to have any pre-knowledge or pre-preparation. you know preparation. Just come and share in, the, uh, in ideas and, and our love of the Lord and, and his word and God's word. Again, uh, thank you for those who have supported us so regularly. And uh, it's, it makes us hesitant to ask about this building fund, but we know that there's a need and we want to keep you informed uh, of where we're, we're really at. And, uh, but thank you for your generosity, particularly over these last few years and all the changes. Um, it's a blessing, and I hope that Forsyth Presbyterian has been a blessing to you as well. Okay, uh, um, I'm going to invite you now to stand and sing our final song, I Once Was Lost But Now Am Found, Amazing Grace. Let's stand and sing Amazing Grace.
We've all experienced losses. We all at some times may feel lost. But God is searching. God is searching for you and God wants to find you. And when you are found, God's love will never let you go. On this 9-11, go out into our troubled world and share that love. Share that love generously. Share that love like those who know that they are found by the Good Shepherd. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.